Let's get to the uh, pay-per-view from back on last Sunday. What was your favorite match among those? It may not have been great, but uh, which one at least got maybe a couple of those uh, Bruce Mitchell stars? Well, you know, the, the, the end of the show had two good matches, and, and the latter match between Shawn Michaels and Chris Jericho was really good, although I'm getting to the point where, number one, I'm kind of tired of ladder matches, and it's just the risk-reward is too great. I mean, it really hurts people, it really bangs them up, and there's all that potential for concussions, all that potential for really hurting people's backs and spines and all that. And um, I'm, I'm sure that those two guys are really, look at them putting it on the dumpster. <laughs> <laughs> you know, really, really hurting, I mean, by the end of that. But, uh, you know, really entertaining match. And they, they had some creative new spots that I think helped out. And even the tug of war with the title belt, I've seen a lot of ladder matches. I hadn't seen that, and I thought that was, that was pretty cool at the end. And there was one with, the, pretty dangerous one with Jericho, coming all the way across, riding the ladder, and then dropping down to the floor that I thought was, was you know, as, as those things go, pretty spectacular. Um, Do they come up with some those spots on their own as they go along? Well, I'm sure, I'm yeah. sure those two. And, you know, well-paced, you know, well-paced, exciting match. And then uh, Jeff Hardy, you know, Jeff Hardy people were really into Jeff Hardy, so they built a good match with, with Triple H and, and Jeff Hardy. And, that, um, and I think by the end, there's a crowd that was really into Jeff Hardy and wanted to see him beat Triple H. I was with a group of people watching it on the old uh, house party, house gathering pay-per-view. Everybody was leaning toward Jeff Hardy. We felt like maybe this might be the time he gets the belt. But then again, I guess he's had so many troubles with the company, they can't give him the belt yet. Maybe they can't trust him. I don't know. Yeah, that's a really tough thing. I mean, he got you know he got taken off a of flight a couple weeks ago for, for, as he said, just being really drunk. And um, I don't know that he's got two strikes on him. I don't know that you that you put it on him. I mean, it's, it's a tough deal. And they did play it right. I mean, I mean, Triple H played into the fact that he was the defending champion, and while he was still a babyface. He was definitely, you know, definitely was building the suspense of could Chris Jericho beat him, and then the the veteran guy rolled him up at the end. So it was, um, that was that. I thought that was a good match. I I did like. I think it's worth trying the um, you know, building up that knockouts can be part of pro wrestling. It can be a finish of pro wrestling, and they did one with Undertaker, and it didn't quite take with the crowd because I don't think they hadn't seen it, and I don't know that that thing had been built up all that well. But but, but that was all right. I thought the rest of the show was kind of. Not so great. They're kind of boring. And I think those three you just mentioned were the main matches. After that, it's hard to remember what the other matches were. Well, I mean, one thing about wrestling is if you do, you know, if you're going to have the good matches, good matches should be the main event. The ones you should remember should be the main events. That's where your money's going to be. That's where your stars are going to be. So, in that sense, it was it was pretty good. I wasn't crazy about it. I just kind of think, I kind of think WWE is in a rut right now of a lot of the same guys doing against each other and you know, kind of circling around against each other over and over and over again. And wrestling the same sort of styles, and it gets it gets a little old. So you I look at it that. too at a guy like CM Punk. I thought maybe they would give CM Punk a little bit longer of a build up. It looks like right now they're trying to team him up in some of this tag team uh, mess with this uh, young gun hook up and that stuff they're doing with him. Yeah, it's really you know it's really odd. And that I, I thought he was getting some momentum, although they were doing it kind of like does he deserve it? Does he not? And then he's just dropped back into the mid card, and you know that's just not going to work. And I mean and, and it doesn't just hurt CM Punk when they do that. I mean, you can say, you make an argument for not being a top star. I understand that. But when the company gets behind somebody and then they tell the fans, they kind of let the fans know, get behind this person, and then they pull back, it's like, you know, it's like getting a rug pulled out from under you. And, and the, the fans don't believe the company the next time. It seems like they're getting behind a young star. I think people are hungry for some, somebody young to come around. Are these new guys going to be those young stars of Ted DiBiase and the Cody Rhodes? I haven't seen it out of these guys yet. There's definitely potential. They're very young. Um, and a lot of people, you know, pointing at Ted DiBiase as the one to watch. I mean, I think, you know, both of them are probably in the same place. To me, we'll see. But, they're, you know, they're giving them opportunities to wrestle. They're, they're, they're putting them in situations where they don't look uh, so bad. And, you know, where they, the weaknesses aren't exposed. And they're giving them experience talking on the mic, and I think that's a pretty, that's going to be an important thing for both those guys. Cody Rhodes, I mean, he's always shown the potential in his, that his father had to, to be able to talk, and DiBiase is pretty good at it, too. So looks, like, really looks like Orton right now is getting a pretty good push, and I don't think he can wrestle because he's still injured, but as far as his work uh, with a the microphone, they're giving him a chance and trying him out a couple of different uh, 
back and forth, maybe kind of in the middle. Some people say they're trying to make him into being like a Stone Cold Steve Austin type character. Not sure about that, but at least he's getting a pretty good push. He's getting a chance to use the microphone more. Well, I mean, he's doing that, and he's kind of they're using his stardom to rub off against DiBiase and Rhodes and Manu and, and, and try with that. And they're taking their time building that instead of just putting them slapping them together really fast. <clears throat> That's a good approach. How long before John Cena comes back? Because some people would feel like, uh, well, once John Cena gets back, the company will be in better shape. Well, I'd say pretty soon. I mean, it, obviously, they did something on Raw with him, and um, they wouldn't be doing that. They wouldn't be putting a feature unless he's coming back in the next you know, month or so, or, or before that. What about uh, the next few weeks? What do you see them doing? How are they doing in this mind network TV? Is that going to be any good? Do you think they did well in that to start out? First, the first week they can't be happy. I mean, my TV has to be thrilled with a 1.9 rating. They don't get that for those cheesy shows they do. But um, I think WWE is concerned that first one they turned around, second one put on a pay per view match with a big show versus you know, the biggest biggest heel of the company right now, and biggest heel on SmackDown versus Triple H in a title match because they know they need to buttress that up. I mean. It could be a big story if SmackDown ratings slide on that network and go much farther down because you start going pretty much down below 1.9, you can get into ECW type territory and those brands are supposed to be equal. That's it. The one thing about wrestling, even for WWE, is they've got the key is television. They've got to keep their television strong. And, and that they could not be, I, I can't imagine they're happy with that, that first 1.9 rating. What about uh, the, uh, you look at the ECW, you also look at the TNA. TNA is still struggling. It's not looking any better for them, to be honest, is it? I think creatively, they're just, I was just really furious watching them last Tuesday, the last Thursday night because uh, they just seemed like they were kowtowing to Vincent Man. They were more worried about what, what is what, what is Vincent Man going to think of Kurt Angle? What is, you know, what is, um, um, you know, what, at the end of it, what did Mick Foley... What did this man think of Mick Foley? You know, why did he leave? He wouldn't have left except they, he was mean to him, and now he's in the in the little company and all that. You've got to compete if you're going to compete. You know, whether you got the, the resources or not, if you're NC State, you better you better bow up when your major competition comes in. I mean, whoever it is, you better do. You know, you better do it. And they didn't do it. I mean, what What are the futures like for, for Kurt Angle and Kevin Nash? Their names are popping up a little bit now about their uh, future runs with TNA. Well, Kurt Angle's got another year on his TNA contract, so they better keep him, you know, keep him strong and keep him going. That was, a, you know, embarrassing him, trying to embarrass him like that. I just didn't see it. didn't fit into the program as well as they thought it would with Jeff Jarrett. Of course, he's wrestling Jeff Jarrett this, this Sunday night on, on the Bounce of Glory pay per view. But, um, you know, he's going to claim he's going into MMA until he's like 65 and he'll never go. So that's kind of with him. Kevin Nash, I mean, I expect to see Kevin. You know, they've got most of the contract done. I don't know whether it's signed now or not signed now, but Kevin Nash will be this a perfect place for him. I mean, he doesn't have to have a busy schedule. He can talk in people's ears and get what he wants and, and not wrestle so often. He can't do that in WWE. He'd have to go on their schedule. What about uh, the Elite XC was on CBS this past Saturday? No Ken Shamrock. But again, Akimbo Slice got his tail whipped in about 14 seconds. Did that wow. help? It was 14 did, seconds. Did that help started. them at all? Have they got any future now? Is uh, Tito Ortiz going to be their next big man on that uh, yeah, group? We'll see whether he, he signs a contract or not. Do they have a future as long as they've got that national television slot? They certainly have a future. But, what kind of um, numbers do you hear those guys are drawing as far as viewership goes? Viewership, um, they were in third place, pretty far, far behind in third place against the other two networks so on a Saturday night where there's not very much competition. That, that doesn't help them, but um, they're doing all right as long as they've got a star in, 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 the, in like Kimbo Slices in the main event. But I mean, he just got his ass knocked out really quickly. He got exposed as people thought he would get exposed sooner or later. Tito Ortiz, is it really uh, going to be him on there with these guys? Did they get him locked into a contract? Is he going to be on TV soon? Locked in, but you got to figure that they must be confident to put him on TV. What about Frank Shamrock? Will he come out from behind the microphone and jump in the uh, in the octagon? You're going to see Frank Shamrock versus Ken Shamrock sooner or later. You think adopted, so? The adopted brothers, yeah, sooner or later you'll see that. I wonder, will CBS have that uh, bout then? I suspect you'll have to pay to see that bout. But they could, I mean, if they need the rating and they're, they're looking for it, so we'll see. What did you know about this Kimbo Slice before he jumped in there on uh, CBS? Had you heard about him before being sure, the street fighter? A, you know, he was a, a phenomenon in that he, was a, he fought... He fought guys that nobody ever heard of on the internet and knocked them out so dramatically that he got a following that way. And um, that, he was the guy they wanted because UFC didn't want him because they, they thought he wasn't skilled enough. But um, he's one of the major names in, in MMA just because he's so charismatic. He has a great look. Not a great talker, but, you know, solid knockouts. And they protected him, but he couldn't protect him forever. And it certainly was kind of a fiasco for Elite XC that the 
that the replacement guy came in and, and knocked his butt out in 14 seconds. Bruce Mitchell, P PWTorch.com, and I guess we can find there pretty much every day of the week. Absolutely. Bruce, thanks for your work as always.